What's going on guys? Welcome back to FG Tech Tips channel. Today we're gonna have a deep look into this beast near me. The Thermaltake A500 is out now since a year and can be seen as a high-end premium middle tower case. Quite expensive if you compare it to most of the gaming cases around, but we're probably looking at uh, the most beautiful case I've ever seen. I was looking for a full metal chassis and the only other alternative I had in mind was the uh, Inwin 905. Quite expensive as well, but probably not uh, user friendly like this one. Another alternative uh, might be the Pantex uh, N2 uh, Evolve X but it doesn't look nearly as nice as this one and in my opinion uh, that's now an uh, old look already seen plenty of times honestly. So in spite of the high price target of this product I went for it mainly for uh, its aesthetics. For some of you this might be uh, reminding the Mac Pro's looks but honestly I think this looks far better and more elegant than anything else. But I warn you that uh, if you buy this case just for the thermals, well, mm, maybe look for something else, as there are better alternatives uh, at the same price range. But if you have a liquid loop like me and uh, good temperatures and want this case mainly for the way it looks, then definitely go for it, as there is not much uh, with these looks and with these premium materials on the market today. As we can see here, the front is made of aluminum. We have a sleek, minimalist and stylish design. Uh, without any evident uh, logo or writing, but if you look closely, you are then able to read the Thermaltake brand here at the bottom. You can also um, immediately see that we have no plastic at all in this case, it's all metal and glass basically. So we have a uh, total aluminium exterior, while the interior is completely made of steel. Also, we not only have a thick tempered glass on the one side, but we have the same also on the other side. The aluminum panels are top quality and they don't catch any fingerprints. The casing utilizes CNC milling technology and was sandblasted. In order to help shape the elegant and sleek curves, I also love the color which is not too dark and it's basically a space gray. We can also see how cool is that the aluminum follows the shape all around the case with rounded edges, not only in the front but also in the back, which is not so common among PC cases nowadays where most of the times we're used to typical rectangles. The last aspect about this case is also the mesh ventilation at the top and front on both sides of the case that should guarantee adequate airflow. Regarding the glass, the case ships with two hinged swing doors with premium quality 4mm thick temper glass design. Both windows are slightly tinted and uh, we can see opening the windows is quite safe also compared to my previous case the S340 Elite where we had the usual four thumb screws now we have a door like opening it has incredibly strong magnets two per each window on top and bottom uh, but in my opinion sometimes uh, they're also a bit too strong as you need uh, quite some strength for opening the windows you can also um, use the turning knob in order to get the windows securely closed but the magnets are uh, so strong that they would be enough anyway for most cases i would probably use the turning knob uh, only for travel reasons honestly you will need a screwdriver for the latches as you can unscrew them uh, by hand quite easily. So let's talk now about INO. Uh, looking at the uh, input and output panel, uh, we see from left to right uh, a reset button, an headset jack, a microphone jack, hard disk LED, a big power button, which I also pressed accidentally uh, when I was moving the case. We have also two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 and one USB Type-C. So I would say we really have everything we need. The only thing missing probably from my previous case is a front HDMI jack which could be useful for those of you who have a VR headset, but personally I've never used it on my NZXT S340 Elite. 
so even if I add it, uh, honestly, I never used it. Let's now move all the components uh, from my previous case into the new one, and uh, then we will go more in detail in all its aspects. So talking about installation, um, let's talk about how comfortable it is to use the case and to install all the components in it. So first of all, something really cool is the possibility to remove the front and top aluminum panels very easily in order to have more space to work. Once you do that, uh, you will understand once again how much build quality Thermaltake has put in this case. The panels are extremely solid and heavy 
and uh, you can really feel uh, these are expensive materials. At the front you can have uh, up to triple 120 or 140 combination, on the top we also have a space for three fans, so a 360 red won't be an issue. I would have preferred probably a couple of centimeters or one inch for the US fans on top of that in order to better install the radiator tubes. So I had some difficulties with one of the, the two tubes. At the bottom I like uh, the power supply cutout in order to show the PSU brand and model. Below that we have a removal fan filter Proceeding upwards, uh, we see that the case has a vertical GPO mount support. The case provides a dual expansion slot VGA support up to 420 mm in length without an HDD rack. I went for a vertical mount and I have installed a PCI Express Razor steel form thermotic. Unfortunately, even if the installation of the riser is quite easy, I don't find any information in the user manual on how to install it and which screws to use for it. This may help uh, some less experienced user, in my opinion, so I would have preferred to have it there. The space between the video card and the motherboard is enough for not bending too much the PCI Express riser and so avoiding damaging it. The video card will be anyway quite close to the panel if you have a fans. In my case I went for a full liquid solution, so also the GPU is under liquid and therefore uh, there is uh, quite enough space as, as we can see, but in case of an ordinary video card probably uh, it won't be so good in terms of the thermals. Moving a bit uh, to the right, uh, we can see that the mounting cage for the hard drives uh, is modular. I took one of the two off and left the other one at the bottom as I only have one hard drive. For everything else I have two M.2 SSD installed on the motherboard, so that's fine with one cage. Looking behind the case, it's basically as good looking as the front. With another tinted glass panel, very stylish, obviously this window might be useless for most of us as it raises the price and weight of the case, plus most of the times it will be probably facing a wall for example, like in my case, but if we look at a different scenario like an open space office, this case would be absolutely stunning in my opinion. Once we open the window we can see how many possibilities for proper cable management we have here. With these four main velcro straps able to group a huge amount of cables, plenty of cable ties points that make the experience of cable management much easier. From here we can also see we have access to three rubber grommets that will help in hiding the cable. There are also other two placed at the top of the PSU location. Talking about the fans, the case comes pre-installed with three 120mm fans for optimal cooling performance. This case can house up to three 140mm front fans, two 140 or three 120 fans on the top and also a radiator sides up to 420mm. As you can see I've used the Cooler Master Master Fan MF120 Elo. you can check the review here if you didn't see that and uh, they are installed basically on the 360 red which is the xs pc tx 360 which you can also check here in my review if you are interested at the front we have two fans pre-installed one at the bottom for cooling the hard drive cage and another one at the center of the for gpu cooling but i removed them for installing a 240 millimeter radiator what I didn't like about this case? Well, uh, while I had no issue at all in mounting the top radiator, I had so many difficulties in installing the radiator fans in the front panel that in the end I gave up and installed everything inside the case, as we can see. The issue is basically on where the screws are mounted. And here is what I mean by that. Let's now have a look into the thermals. So the tests were all performed without the second drive cage. I tested the three configurations, so the stock configuration. The second configuration is basically the same as the previous one but without the front panel. 
and the config uh, tree which is basically an uh, open case so open at the front and the top but with the windows uh, still closed all the tests were performed by using uh, hardware monitor and with two runs of 3d mark uh, time spy plus two runs of uh, cinebench r20 as we can see here i monitored the temperatures of ssd hdd gpu and cpu both in idle and max temperature all the values are measured in celsius so i hope this review was quite helpful for you guys if you liked the video please remember to leave a comment below and if you like more of this content please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for supporting me thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one Oh, 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 oh,